Jack McGee Written by Jerry Spinelli We know the character's real name is Jeffrey But now he's Maniac McGee Maniac McGee Good morning, sixth graders. How are we doing this lovely morning? Today is the last Thursday of quarter two. You have two days left to get those grades up. And I, one million percent, promise you that is possible to do. Because I'm an understanding individual. This transition has not been the easiest for everyone. We're halfway through, though. We're beyond halfway through. Miss Naughton's return is imminent. So, let us progress forward. Let's open our texts, Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli, to chapter 13 on page 45. When we left, young maniac... He ran downstairs and had to look at the address outside. This is the first time he's had a home in a long time. He's living with the Beals in the East End, which we should keep in mind is a rare thing for a white kid to be living in the East End. Okay. Page 45. Amanda was happy to give up her room to Maniac. It gave her an excuse to sleep with Hester and Lester every night. Remember, that's, I think it's three and four-year-old brother and sister. Most of the time during the day, the little ones drove her crazy. She, she couldn't stand to be in the same hemisphere with them. But at night, the best thing was to have them snuggled up on both sides of her. It made no sense. But that's how it was. Mr. Beale divided the little one's room into two sections with a panel of plywood, and Amanda moved her stuff into the back part. Except for her suitcase of books, that stayed in her old room with Maniac. The way Maniac fit in, you would have thought he was born there. He played with the little ones, and he read them stories, and he taught them things. He took Bow Wow out for runs, and he did the dishes without anybody asking, which made Amanda feel guilty, so she started to dry. He carried out the trash, mowed the grass, cleaned up his own spills, turned out lights, put the cap back on the toothpaste tube, flushed the toilet, and, Mrs. Beale called it the miracle on Sycamore Street, he kept his room neat. Every morning, Mrs. Beale looked into it. No socks on the floor. No drawers open. No messed up bed. That was the most amazing thing. The bed. It looked as if he hadn't even slept in it. Which, she soon found out, was the case. Late one night, she opened the door and found Maniac sleeping on the floor. She lugged him onto the bed, but by the next night, he was back on the floor. Maniac just couldn't stand being too comfortable. Lying on a mattress gave him a weird feeling of slowly rising on a scoop of mashed potatoes. He was that way with chairs, too. If he had a choice, he'd usually sat on the floor. Other strange things happened in the house, such as the yellow bucket and sponge spent more time gathering dust in the cellar and less time in Mrs. Beale's hands. Because, with Maniac around... Hester and Lester lost their interest in crayoning everything in sight, and therefore, sometimes for 15 minutes in a row, Mrs. Beale was seen doing something she hadn't done since the little ones were born. Nothing. Such as, Amanda started leaving her suitcase of books home. Such as, everybody's fingertips started to heal, because Maniac took over the endless, thankless job of untying Hester and Lester's sneaker knots. Such as, Hester and Lester started to enjoy talking, taking a bath. 
which was the solution to a very huge problem in the Beale household. Once upon a time, Hester and Lester loved to get a bath, as long as Amanda got one with them. It was a little crowded, especially when the little ones added their boats and their floating dinosaurs, but it was fun and warm and yelpy and soapy. Then came the day when Amanda entered fourth grade, and she decided she was getting too old to tub it with her little brother and sister. They begged her and begged her, but she wouldn't get in. They tried to storm the bathroom when she was in there, but she locked the door on them. And so... Sorry, excuse me, I lost my place. And so, the little ones went on strike. We're halfway down the page on 47. They placed their hands on Lyle, Lyle, Crocodile, and swore they would never take another bath until Amanda joined them. And even though they couldn't stop their much larger mother from lifting them and plunking them in the water, they could refuse to touch the soap or the washcloth. They could make her do it, and they could sit there all stiff with their chins down in their chests and their arms folded tightly and their legs clamped together, and if their mother wanted to wash their armpits, she would have to get a crowbar and pry their arms up, because they sure as heck were not going to move. That's the way it was for a long time, until Maniac arrived. On that first Sunday, as soon as the little ones found out that their new pal had slept over, they mobbed him. Jeffrey! Jeffrey! Get a bath with us, will ya? Maniac replied, sure, okay. Not thinking much about it. After all, it was still before breakfast. But the little ones never let up. And at exactly 9.15 a.m., the three of them got into the tub. By the time they got out, it was too late to go to church and almost lunchtime. From then on, the baths usually took place at night. Sometimes, Mrs. Beale would poke her head in and stare. One little black girl, one little black boy, one medium white boy. And she would smile and wag her head and sigh. Never saw such a tub. The time she heard Hester and Lester yelling for help, though, she was downstairs. She came running. What's the matter? The little ones pointed. Look! She looked. Maniac was covered with blotches. Round, red blotches. All shiny from the bath water. They looked something like little pepperonis. They took him to the doctor. The doctor took a look and said it wasn't chicken pox. And it wasn't measles. He said it might be an allergy. He asked what the boy had had for dinner. Mrs. Beale answered, pizza. Well, the doctor chuckled, can't be that. Can you imagine a youngster getting sick on pizza? Everybody laughed. Besides, said the doctor, this would have showed up on him since he was little, most likely, every time he came near a pizza. He turned to Maniac, still chuckling. You have eaten pizza before, haven't you? Maniac got a funny expression on his face. He looked around. Everybody was staring at him. The silence grew longer. Eyes grew wider. And that's how they found out that Maniac McGee was allergic to pizza. Chapter 14, page 50. Maniac loved his new life. He loved his new sneakers, the ones Mrs. Beale bought for him. He loved the new quietness of his footsteps as he trotted Bow Wow through the early morning streets. He loved the early morning. The before the working people time, he called it, when even those who went to work the earliest were still sleeping their second story shades, sleeping behind their second story shades. When it seemed as if the whole world had been created just before he woke up on the bedroom floor. The red brick rows of houses, even the windows resting from faces, the cool, silent sidewalks and streets, so quiet you could hear the water running far below the sewer grates, while the sun shinnied up the rain spouts. He loved the silence and solitude. But he also loved the noise, which came later in the day. He loved the sound of pancake batter hissing on the griddle. He loved the noise of the church they went to on Sunday mornings, a church called Bethany when the minister would thump on the pulpit 
and the people would call out, Amen! And the choir would swing this way and swing that way and would sing hallelujah to the people. And the people would sing hallelujah right back to the choir. And everybody just got happier and happier. And it all made him want to do more than run. So one day, he just jumped himself out onto the pew bench and threw his arms to the sky and shouted at the top of his lungs, hallelujah, amen. And this time, nobody looked funny at the crazy kid yelling by himself. Then two members of his own family, Hester and Lester, jumped onto the bench with him and shouted, Hallelujah! Amen! And everybody laughed and clapped and sang. He loved the 4th of July block party when the whole East End converged for a day and night of games and music and grilled chicken and ribs and sweet potato pie and dancing until the last firecracker and then some. Maniac loved the colors of the East End. The people colors. For the life of him, he couldn't figure out why these EastEnders called themselves black. He kept looking and looking, and the colors he found were ginger snap, and light fudge, and dark fudge, and acorn, and butter rum, and cinnamon, and burnt orange, but never licorice, which to him was real black. He especially loved the warm brown of Mrs. Beale's thumb, as it appeared from under the creamy white icing that allowed him to lick away when she was frosting his favorite cake. He loved joining all the colors at the vacant lot and playing the summer days away. Stickball, basketball, football. Half the time he forgot to go home for lunch. One day, a new kid, tall and lean, came to the vacant lot, spinning a football. He spotted Maniac and stopped cold. He came closer, bent over, and stared. Then he broke up a billboard grim and called out, Hey, everybody! Hey, everybody, remember I said about the little white dude snatched the pass off in gym class? Here he is. This is the dude. And this, of course, was hands down. The first thing hands did when they chose up sides was to pick Maniac for his team. You crazy hands, a high schooler laughed. He's just a runt. His peach fuzz ain't even come in yet. Everybody laughed. But hands took him anyway and played quarterback and threw passes to Maniac all day long. They huddled and scratch their plays in the dirt. Down to the tin can and break for the goal. Stop and go with the rock. Curl around the junk, and curl around the junk tire. If Hans Pass was anywhere near Maniac, if Maniac could get at least two fingertips on it, the ball was as good as caught. The high schoolers and junior hires went crazy trying to stop him. Nobody kept official records that day, but legend has it that by the time Amanda Beal showed up and called, Jeffrey, dinner! Maniac had scored 49 touchdowns. And when they played stickball and they saw him pulling the ball out on the street into the backyards, they started putting two and two together. And somebody came up to him and squinted in his face and said, You that maniac kid. And somebody else said, You that maniac. And pretty soon everybody was saying it, including Hester and Lester. And finally in the kitchen one day, as he licked white icing from her thumb, Mrs. Beale said it, You that maniac. He told her what he told everyone. I'm Jeffrey. You know me. Because he was afraid of losing his name. And with it, the only thing he had left from his mother and father. Mrs. Beale smiled. Yeah, I know you all right. You'll be nothing but Jeffrey in here. But, she nodded to the door. Out there? I don't know. She was right, of course. Inside his house, a kid gets one name. But on the other side of the door, it's whatever the rest of the world wants to call him. Maniac 